I'd oh, like to welcome God. to my show uh, and to everybody watching this through the Triple M YouTube channel or through my YouTube channel, one of my friends, YJK, Yasmin Jade Kassam. Hello. Again. YJK. Someone hasn't <laughs> called me that in a while. I love it. <laughs> Do you get a nickname? Because you've been in the US for so long. Have you got any nicknames other than Yaz? Just Yaz. Everyone calls me Yaz. My dad is still the only one that calls me Mini, like takes it from the second half of Yasmin, Mini. Yeah. Um, but no, everyone just calls me Yaz. Now I'm going to touch on a few things throughout your career as I normally do when I talk to you in this conversation, but I'll start with what we're here for, Dive Club on Netflix. <laughs> I remember when you were filming this and you are posting pictures. I was really looking forward to it. It's now on Australian Netflix. Firstly, uh, how did you get it? Was it an audition process? What, what did you do to get the role? Shane us, you wouldn't believe. Yeah, it was an audition, but get this. this in a nutshell, I was stuck in LA because of my visa. Right. All the um, visa stuff shut down. And so if I left the country... I would have lost my visa. So I was waiting for some papers, but everything mm -hmm. shut down because of lockdown. So I was stuck here for nine months. We had like the Black Lives Matter movement. It was a really intense energy over here. And then the day that my green card came through was the day that I got pinned for a role in Australia. And it was a US series filming in the Gold Coast. Mm -hmm. And I was my agents were like, just spend the money, trust us, like just fly <laughs> to Australia. And I was like, okay I guess I'll do it like it was so expensive and then during quarantine hotel quarantine it went to the other girl and I was like so devastated mm -hmm. and I was in quarantine in Sydney I think and I said to my agents I was like what should I do where should I go do I go back home to my parents in Perth do I just stay in Sydney like the thing I've come here for has gone to someone else and they were like just go to the Gold Coast there's a lot happening there go to the Gold Coast and the day after I got out of quarantine and went to the Gold Coast, I auditioned for Dive Club and booked it that week. It was so weird. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How weird is that? I was like, there must have been something bigger at play because I was so sad about this other role. And as much as I wanted to come back to Australia, it was also for this other TV show. I was mm. like, you know, I'll, I'm in the mix. I may as well go. And then... I saw this brief and it was like this diverse girl that feels more at home under the waves than on land. And I was like, oh, this is why I've gone back to Australia. That's you. Like, the universe has taken care of me. Yeah. And honestly, it was so amazing to go from nine months of, I didn't see a soul except for I was by myself for three months. And right. then I lived with a housemate for six months, didn't see a soul, didn't leave the house, couldn't do anything to being like diving on the great barrier reef and like flying twice a week and I was like well, this is like this is crazy because it, it was really such a flip on what I'd been experiencing that year well it was tailor-made for you definitely and uh karma and a higher being as you said got you that role got you the job it's gotta be right and Steve Jaggy thank god for Steve Jaggy I tell you what we love him <laughs> yes Steve's a really good producer I haven't spoken to him yet but I I've just watched everything he's done and he he has like that signature style and I hope he uses you again in another project because you're part of the furniture I think now of what he does oh thank I hope so too I love that team I really really did I've actually been a fan of Steve's for I can't even think maybe like seven six seven years I met him once Maybe it like, it was after I booked Jungle, it might've been like an AFM party or something, the American film market. But I was there with the like Jungle producers and I met Steve and he was just so inspirational. He was telling me all the things he wanted to do in Australia and things like that. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, all these articles were popping up and I was like, wow, he's really like making waves, you yeah, know? Like, quick. Yeah, it's incredible. And um, I don't know, I'm just... I'm really, really happy to be part of that family. And I think everything they do is so family friendly. I love that they're pushing diversity to the front line. Like they are using LGBTQ storylines. They're really empowering women with three female directors. I love that. Yeah. Directors. Um, yeah. So I'm just so grateful. Shane Oz, so grateful. Uh, 
also a Queensland location. Uh, did you have any injuries? Did any any insect bites? Anything happen on the set? <laughs> I was okay. I, I um getting used to the diving, like the ears is definitely okay. a thing. Um, but no, I think you know the other girls, the younger girls had to dive a lot. And I know that I mean it's hard on your body, you know, like all of that diving. So good on them. But I didn't have any crazy injuries or anything like that. I, I got away pretty unscathed. <laughs> Uh, Maybe next season she'll be a surfer and I'll like, really hurt myself or something. <laughs> well, I hope so. I hope there's a spin-off series. Yeah, me too. You know what's so funny? I arrived in Port Douglas and I was with some of the other cast that were, had arrived at the same day. And I was like, you guys, this is my dream job. I'm going to wake up. I'm going to go for a surf in the morning and then we're going to go to set. And they were all like, you can't surf in no Port surf. Douglas. And I was like, what do you mean you can't surf in Port Douglas? Clearly had not looked into this and had just gone straight to, like, my dream world because they were like, no, there's, like, jellyfish that can sting you and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, I had no idea. Anyway, I quickly learned how dangerous the Port Douglas waters can be. <laughs> <laughs> I know that a lot of great movies have been uh, filmed in Port Douglas, so you're, you're stepping in the paths of some very famous people. It's a great location for filming, you know, anything, either period or contemporary. Uh, what about uh, things like your character? Do you, did, did it help being up there and just playing along or did, did you stick to the script? Because there must have been a little bit of variation in the role you played because of the atmosphere and the, the joyous crowd and ensemble that you were with. Oh, they, they are so, the team is so free with us kind of pitching different ideas and things like that. Obviously time allowing, like when you're so, shooting, yeah. when you're shooting TV, it can sometimes you have to move a little quicker, but they, the directors were so, so Rihanna and Christine and Haley were really, really collaborative. And so if we wanted to like change up a few things, we wanted to talk about uh, adding a little thing or just like improvised moments they were always so open to it and that's like my favorite thing is improvising and just like improvising in your character so I, I really enjoyed that do you think they'll make action figures out of your characters for season two <laughs> maybe of the girls I don't know if Lucinda would get one but I, oh, I don't know that. <laughs> I would I would like that I'm really hot on Lucinda and John's relationship I've been saying that from day one like I just want Lucinda and John to like get married and have babies and I've been like pushing it since my first day on set before I even introduced myself to anyone <laughs> I was like I just love the idea of them together I, I love Tim Ross I'm a big Tim Ross fan oh, yeah yeah he's good do you think shows um, for all age groups and families are lacking? I mean, a dive club is suitable for all ages, and I think that's a benefit. Uh, what do you think? Do you think there should be more of them? Is there enough? Is there a more, enough opportunities for an actor to, to appear in them? I think that something I love that what the Jaggy company is doing is the show has enough edge you know, but at the same time, it's really accessible. Like, you feel safe having your kids watch this show you know yeah. you feel like you're in safe hands and I actually don't think there's a lot of that you know like there are some other shows that maybe cross over just a little bit like this is a bit more gun violence there's a bit more swearing there's a bit more racy stuff like I do think that what Steve is tapping into is a really beautiful like space and like Dive Club is cool. Like it's a cool show, you know, but it's also safe for all ages. And I think that's kind of refreshing. How many surfboards do you own these days? Oh my God, Shane Oss, sold, <laughs> sold them. I sold them and I'm asking Santa for a long board this Christmas. So hopefully I've been good. But when I, well, when I left for Australia, I just sold everything. I was like, I don't know when I'm coming back. I guess that makes sense, but I was almost going to ask you during our conversation today to maybe put one on display in the background, but that explains that you don't have any. <laughs> I don't have any at the moment, but I'm hoping Santa brings me a gorgeous longboard, um, maybe a mal. I don't know. I, I've been looking at a few, so we'll see. But, you know, surfing over here is, is really fun. Like, I, I have a lack of a fear of sharks here. In Australia, I have more of a shark fear. Yeah, of course. 
Uh, do you think yeah. there's uh, enough uh, work building for actors again since you know quarantine and various things have happened globally? Are you still doing a lot of self tapes, or are they more person to person auditions now? No, no person to person. I mean, when I was in Australia, I did a few person to persons. Um, not here. No, I got invited for like one commercial one the other day, but everything is tapes. Everything is tapes. Um, makes it really easy to lie about where you are <laughs> when it's tape, which I love. I'm the queen of being wherever I need to be. Um, but I mean, look, I do miss that casting interaction. It is so fun. Like I remember booking a job because I like, they were like, oh, it's so charming. I had a ukulele in one hand because I did a little song for them yep. it's here in LA and I accidentally like bumped into the door and I was like oh sorry oh sorry and it, they were like that's why I got it and it was like so you you know and I do miss those moments because when you're editing your scenes you're only showing that part of you're showing the actor part of you as opposed to them really meeting you uh, what about stand-up comedy there's the stand-up comedy clubs are, are you know they're performing again they need people would you be up to do that again possibly yeah I, I don't know I don't know about that I mean that was like try, starting to kind of take over my life a little bit like before COVID it yeah. felt like the world like the universe wanted me to do stand-up it felt like everything was so easy like all of a sudden all these clubs were booking me and you're like, very good at it that's why oh thanks I just I don't know I think it's really informed my writing and I don't think you know this but I'm now a writer and so I do think that stand up and like doing things like the San Francisco Comedy Festival where like we toured all along the coast I performed so many different crowds that it really makes your material strong and I think it's made me a better writer which is my priority like my priority is booking roles and, and selling shows that with things that I want to talk about. I think as you get older as an actor, it becomes less about like me, me, me and what I want to book and more yeah. about like the little paw print you want to leave on the world when you when you move on, you know? So that's my, I think how stand up has helped me. And I have been asked since I got back here and I was asked when I was in Australia and I just, I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to think about it. One more stand up question. Did you ever say a joke and it was silent cricket? Yes. Yeah. And how yeah. did you react? What What do you do in that situation? You pee, Shane. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> that happens to me in Carmel by the Sea. I kind of knew it was going to happen though. So as a stand up, when you get to a venue, you can kind of read the crowd. So you just kind of wander around and like listen to what people are saying, kind of yeah. see what kind of people they are. And I knew straight away, I was like, okay, these white conservative married women are not going to enjoy my LGBTQ Muslim humour. Yeah. And this is going to be a rough crowd. Yeah. And sometimes like if someone gives me 10 minutes, I have time at the top to kind of get to know people. But if you've just got five and you've got to do your set, if they're not into it, they're not into it. And you just have to keep moving on. Just you know? <laughs> and it happens to the best commit the best comedians. Like any comedian I've ever met that like has Netflix specials is like, mm, it happens. Like mm -hmm. that's how you know your material is strong, is like the majority of people are laughing. But not everyone's gonna find something funny. It's so objective, you know? And right. like one of my things with stand-up is about being able to get up and really be myself a lot of women have to dull their light when they do stand up right they'll wear like slacks and sneakers and be like growing it out like I'm very feminine and I like being that when I'm doing stand up you know and it is really difficult like I've had so many tough times it's a male dominated area and you know yeah. it's pretty sexist um you know like I, like I once rocked up at the comedy store which is a a club here in LA on Sunset and I yeah. rocked up to perform and the guy was like oh hey like are you here for a show and I was like yeah yeah I'm performing and he was like you're performing oh. and I was like mm -hmm. yeah because it's a pretty renowned club and I was like yeah yeah I'm performing and he was like well what show are you performing in and I said oh funny girls and he said huh is there such a thing oh, and no. I was like 
Yeah. Yeah. They're like, you know, little, th- I mean, that's not even the top of the, uh, not even the tip of the iceberg, Shane. Yeah. It's a re- like one time at a show that was a really, it was a big show. It was like in an auditorium. I was introduced. They were like, and now we have a woman. And oh, I was no. like, oh God, oh, get the mic. I was like, here we go. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's a really, you've got to love it to do it. And I was grinding on it for a little while, but I don't know if my heart's in it, but I'm grateful that it's helped me with my writing. I really have. You've prompted me to ask you something, uh, and I had it on my list anyway, about race. Are you still finding, you've been in LA for such a long time now, working on and off, are you still finding race hurdles, you know, obstacles or not as much? We were talking about this last night at dinner, actually. It's, it's, the times are changing, you know, and it was really interesting for me being in LA for a couple of years and being so kind of in the the comedy scene and the theatre scene and then going back to Australia and just seeing how things have shifted. They're definitely shifting, right? They're shifting. Oh, Oh, yeah, just, they're shifting, yes. Thank goodness they're shifting, but at the same time, you know, we're still looking at a predominantly white industry. And uh, I'm hoping that not only will more stories be told from diverse voices, but also we can look at a cast of people and not just see like one kind of Asian and another kind of Asian and then an Indigenous person and then white people. Like Mm -hmm. it should be about the vibe of the person, not about their looks really yeah. at the end of the day in terms of telling stories um so you know we'll see but it's a slow slow process and I, I know a couple of really amazing diverse artists and everyone is just trying to do their best to make like try and make things a little bit better before they kind of thank move you. on for the next generation yeah thank you for clarifying what I thought it's getting there but a long way to go obviously Oh, and especially Australia. I was shocked when I went to Australia. I was like, oh, like things are definitely shifting. But I mean, I don't know who's fooling anyone. I was like, they're not shifting as much as here. You know, like I would love to see some shows that aren't just white people with one brown person. Like that would be really refreshing because that is not what you see when you're out in Australia in the city. Hmm. You know, like I just think TV shows should reflect the world. Like the whole point of TV TV shows is to take us on a journey where we can think about the world and our lives, the world around us. And if it's not reflected in the TV, then how are we supposed to see it? Yep. You know? Um, You're very happy, it seems, with all your writing that you're doing. You're expanding. Will you direct? Do you think you will direct a a short or would you put your hand up to direct a feature or or something for Netflix maybe, an episode of a television show? Is that on the agenda? I would do that, but it would honestly be a couple of seasons into a show that I've written. Like writing a show is so much work. Like the dinner meeting I had last night is about a show I have here that's just been picked up um and unfortunately like congratulations thanks it's actually a show that I co-wrote uh my producing partner here is she's on a Netflix series too a different Netflix series she's on a show called Never Have I Ever which is a Mindy Kaling show on Netflix and we've we've been writing since COVID and this has just been like an ongoing thing and I mean, I just remember coming back from like dive club shoots and like taking Zoom meetings at like two in the morning in Australia (laughs) with like these huge people in America. I was like, oh my God, how is this happening? Um, But you know, we're, we're getting into a really good place with it and I'm so excited. And I also have a show that I wrote myself that I now have a producing partner on in Australia, which is much more autobiographical to me. And we have a meeting what time is it now? Shane us in 35 minutes. We have a meeting which is going to be prepping us for the next week, which is um, a couple of network meetings and stuff. So everything is kind of coming along, which is exciting because I've been working on these shows for maybe two, three years. Amazing. And I've always wanted to do it. And I never thought, I just never thought that I could. And I took this writing course and uh, it's like pilot writing course specializing in TV. And I've done all the stand up and all of a sudden, like I got writing rep here and I was like, oh, 
yeah, I can, I can do this. So I was like, oh, I'm, I'm funny and I can write a story. And, I, you know, and it feels really, really empowering to be like I have a voice and especially with the dynamic way acting can be as a career. It's so nice to have something that's consistent, you know. Um, I'm really, really excited. So, I mean, my hope and prayer for us is that one day you're interviewing me about a show that I've written or, or co-written. Uh, that would be, like, so amazing to me. Well, good luck. I know you probably can't tell me much about it. And I promise not to overlap into your next meeting. <laughs> I've only got two no. more questions. <laughs> Uh, have you bumped into Kelsey Grammer recently while you've been in LA <laughs> and caught up with him? Yeah, where's Kelsey these days? I haven't seen him in a while. Actually, didn't he just come out with a movie? I need to watch it. Have you seen? He has uh, like long hair. Yeah, he has something coming out, but I thought you might have bumped into him after your fantastic scenes together in Guardians of the <laughs> Two. <Tomb. laughs> <laughs> all I remember, all I remember about shooting that character was she had to have this really high ponytail and yeah. my head hurt <laughs> so much. Truly, I was like, oh, I never want to have a high ponytail ever again. It was so painful. <laughs> now you're fit, you keep energised, you've done some boxing. Uh, if you were in a fight and you were walking out to the ring, the boxing ring, what song would you like to have playing? to pump you up oh I mean I listen a lot to the eight mile soundtrack that feels a little yeah. on the nose but I think something Eminem okay like that's gonna get you going he's so angry oh classic Eminem really goes <laughs> down a treat when you crank it up so yeah good choice I'm, I'm so opposite. Like, I love Eminem and rap. And then on the other side, I'm, like, the biggest Delta Goodrum fan you've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I got to say, when you're in quarantine, you were doing some pretty good videos. Uh, they kind of stopped. But did you get much of a re reaction from those? You know, your little musical things that you did and your uh, quarantine yeah. tips? That oh, my funny. quarantine video. Thank you. I'm trying to think what happened. I mean, I just make them purely out of love. Like, I just really like doing it. Important. It's obviously more fun when I have a budget. Yeah. You know? And like the quarantine one, I obviously just made all by myself in the room and then recorded it and edited it and everything. Um, but, you know, they've actually brought me opportunity that you would never think. I, I mean, like, what was it? I think it was my Coachella my Coachella music video that I did. Um, I got this audition by request for this like new Marvel thing for like a lead. And I had to sign this NDA and it was a whole thing. And it was like to be the person. And I was like, what am I like? How am I auditioning for like, why this will be a famous person. It ended up getting cast as a famous person. But I was like, why is this like coming to me? And my agents were like, they were looking for someone funny. They want, because Marvel likes, you know, someone who can be dramatic, but also sure. hit the funny bits. And um, the casting director found me on Instagram and watched Coachella. No word of a lie. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I couldn't, I could not believe my little video got me that audition. Well, uh, I, I guess you don't want to say what, what that was, but at least you're in that casting director's mind, maybe, maybe to this day. Yeah, I mean, up. they... They do. It's like I well, would, don't want to say the name, but yeah, they do all the all the things that you could probably name. They do. So right. yeah, I felt I felt super lucky. But also, it's funny, you know. I think when you do things from your heart and just for the sake of like being creative and enjoying it, mm. kind of like the stand up. Like I think when you're just like doing it, something that feels like you're in flow and you're enjoying it, like something comes out of it eventually. You know. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, now, Georgia May Davis spoke very highly of you when we spoke about Dive Club. <laughs> How was she Isn't to work so with? Lovely. <laughs> yeah. Georgia, I didn't get to like do scenes with Georgia. I'm trying to think, but I mean, I saw her around all the time. Yes, all of yes. us living in the same hotel. Um, I mean, she's gorgeous. I think all of those actresses and, and yeah. the young guys, they're really lovely. They've got good heads on their shoulders, and I think they're really good role models too they handle themselves really well and I've seen them do interviews and they're great I'm really excited for all of them like what's going to happen for them you know they're coming up in 
a different era. There's so much more opportunity in Australia. There's so much diversity. There's so much more lots of things. And mm. I'm just really excited to like see where they all see where they all end up. When are you coming back to Australia? Is there any plans? Have you got something lined up you can tell me about? Uh, any well, more? I'm on I'm on something here at the moment. Mm which should end in January, I think. And then I'm auditioning for something that starts January 31st. So if I book that, I'll be back. We'll see. But I I love working in Australia. Like, mm. you know, having that year, which I didn't expect to be a year of like doing Dive Club and then going back to Neighbours and then doing Joe Exotic. I was like, oh my God, there's so much work here. Yeah. Like, what's happened? <laughs> Everything's changed. You know, it's still really, really competitive over here. And there's less stuff because of COVID. Like they're shooting stuff, but it is less. So I'm anything to work back home. How did Kate McKinnon find you for uh, Joe Exotic? Did you know her previously or were you just lucky enough to do another self-tape? And they go, I want you. Kate McKinnon actually, so I did the CBS comedy showcase um and Kate McKinnon did that just before she booked SNL I don't think we've ever discussed it but it's basically like a Saturday Night Live audition yeah um and I think I'm the first Australian to ever get it and they're the ones that spurred me on because I think 10 girls and 10 guys in the whole country book it every year and they were the ones that are like you're funny and I was like am I like I don't know (laughs) like I never really saw myself down this route you know like doing the comedy thing I was always so drama Yes, but I you are very funny, this, naturally. Thanks, Dana. But I tested for this, like, CBS uh, sitcom. Yeah. And then I got invited to audition for it. And I make all these characters, and it's so fun. Like, I have, like, a Muslim pop star, and I have my grandma, like, my Indian grandma, and yeah. um, I have a hair on my chin. Like, I do all these random things. And it's and I booked it. It was so fun. And from that, um, that's where I kind of fell more into the comedy space and I think got more comedy auditions. Yeah. And then when I was in Australia, Dive Club finished, Neighbours finished, um, and I was like, oh, I guess I'll just go back to the States for a while because I have a partner here. And I went back to, I came, I was booked my flight back to LA and got three auditions for Joe Exotic, taped them all <laughs> and booked one. And I was like, oh, I guess I'll stay for a little while. So went no, back that, to the goal. <laughs> that's going to be huge. It's going to be a huge show. So congratulations. I look forward to seeing you in that. Thank and- you, me too. I'm in the first episode. <laughs> Now, last two questions to wrap it up. Um, how did you meet your partner? At a comedy theatre. Another comedian or someone in the audience? No, he's a comedian. He's an improviser. Okay. Um, he also writes and he's acted. He's been in a bunch of different, you know, all the sitcoms here, really. He's been here for like 12 years. So he's done How I Met Your Mother and like, I don't know, Blackish and all the big shows here. Fantastic. But um. Yeah, he's also a writer and it's sad. Improvising hasn't really come back here yet, but um, we actually met, I was working at the front of the theatre. I used to also perform there, but he performed on Friday nights. And so I would just like let him in when he'd come and we never really spoke. And then when I was in hotel quarantine in Australia, we matched Ah. and started FaceTiming and kind of fell (laughs) fell in love. We're like love is blind, but not really. Um, we fell in love and he picked me up from LAX when I got back to LA and yeah, we lived together and we're very happy and feel like I found the love of my life, which is pretty exciting. So I just got to find out how to bring him back to Australia. They're making that real tricky <laughs> right now. <laughs> well, um, you're now a Chiefs fan too, so that's true love. <laughs> I know I can't honestly if you told me Shane else that I would be a sport person no right look at your face never water water sports yes (laughs) yeah water sports and like to be honest like you know I've been around sport before I had a previous partner that was like was a rugby player I didn't enjoy it at all I was like "Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, don't get it I love watching NFL. I love watching the Chiefs. I love Sunday. We just have like, just watched a game just then. I love Sunday football days. And I don't know what's happening. I guess this is what love, like real love does to you, right? Well, very lucky man, I've got to say. Uh, oh, now, <laughs> I told him about you. you uh, now, 
your your opinion on Dive Club? Why should people watch it? Uh, what will people get out of it? Should families watch it together? Just your general opinion on this. Like I gave it a four and a half out of five. I really enjoyed it. So what's your opinion? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, I just think Dive Club is an incredible Australian TV series that showcases so much young Australian talent, no. showcases Australian directors. There's so many diverse cast members in the front of this show, truly. Yeah. And we have a showrunner that really cares about what he's putting out into the world. We're sharing a really good message about friendship, empowering women. And I think it's it's good, clean fun, you know? It really is. And I think sometimes the world needs a little bit of that. So you can really <laughs> spend time watching something with your family, which I think we didn't used to appreciate as much as we maybe do now. Well, you might even get to write an episode one day if there is a. Yeah, Jackie, hello. Exactly. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Georgia Harrison, who wrote a lot of the episodes, we've got a bunch of great writers, but she's wonderful and she's someone I really would like to work with. She's a really, really great writer. Um, so who knows? Maybe I've got to go knock on Jaggy's door. Be like, oi, <laughs> hello, I can write and I can act for you. <laughs> Well, yes, thank you. Um, you're a pretty amazing person. That aura has not changed. If nothing else, that aura around you is getting brighter. And um, as oh. you know, I've, I've pretty much followed your career since we first met. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Jane Olsen. You too. You're such an absolute sweetheart, seriously, in this world of journalism. Tell you what, you're one of a kind. Well, no, I don't know. I'm a white guy and I'm middle-aged, but I must ask the right questions because everyone seems to enjoy my interviews. <laughs> our producer our american producer we have like a very big production company backing our show here and he's, he's a really big deal and we were at this meeting last night and he was like you know i'm white and i'm like straight and i'm middle-aged and i was like yeah that's why you need me around bro hello <laughs> <laughs>